Okay, so let's take a look at networking. Okay, so quickly let's go over what the IB says about this. And we, we looked at this a little bit last time. So we have to identify different types of networks. This will include words like LAN, VLAN, WAN. Okay, so there's some terminology that you're going to be, need to be familiar with because these words might show up on your exam. Um, importance of standards. So standards include a common protocol system with networks so they can always talk the same language. Um, there's something called the OSI seven layer model. Okay, you don't need to know too much about that other than it exists, but basically how communication over networks is done. Uh, topologies, or so, pardon me, technologies required for a VPN. Evaluate the use of a VPN. VPN, as you'll see, stands for virtual private, private network. Terms to know, protocol, data packet. Why are protocols necessary? Why the speed of a data transmission can vary network to network? Why compression is necessary? Characteristics of media, okay, like different types of media, including like fiber optic versus wireless when using networks, okay? Uh, what is packet switching? What are the advantages and disadvantages of wireless networking? Um, what are the components of a wireless or hardware network, okay? Uh, do, 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 do. What are the different types of security on networks and the advantages and different disadvantages of different types of security? Okay, so it's a fairly broad topic, networking. So, let's take a look at this. So, communication networks, as we talked about a little bit last time, can vary in size, okay? From large networks to small networks, they allow us to share components and peripherals. They allow us to communicate. Networks can be both wired, wireless, or both, depending on the devices and the hardware that you set up to create your network, okay? So, essentially, a network is a set of interconnected devices that can communicate with one another and share resources. For the hardware to work on a network, it has to have some version of a network operating system built into it. So essentially all that means is it has software that allows it to talk on the network. Okay, there are three main sizes to networks. There's what's called a wide area network, the acronym being WAN, okay? which covers a large geographical area, such as an entire province or an entire country. The wide area network is obviously a big network. The internet is essentially a collection of wide area networks. The best example I could give of that would be the MTS telephone system is a network that covers the entire province of Manitoba. Here's my lovely graphic that the internet is a connection of all these wide area networks. Okay, wide area networks communicate across geographical distances like the ocean, often using satellite linkage. So it can actually bounce data transmission off of satellites to cross wide areas like the ocean itself, right? In some cases, it is a wire that runs even across the ocean floor, uh, depending on the distance that it needs to travel. From there, we can have something called a metropolitan area network or a MAN network. This is now moving, still a large network, but smaller than that size. The idea being metropolitan is it might be city-wide, right? So a cell phone system within the city might be a metropolitan area network, okay? Again, the, the line between these is starting to blur a little bit because these networks, as they grow in size, is it a metropolitan, or is it a wide area? It doesn't really matter, okay? The more common term often is the wide area network, but it's just sort of generally thought of as in size. But then, when we get down smaller than that, we have the local area network. Now, this is a different one. The local area network is a network of a small size, usually of a building, or even just your house would have a local area network built into it. It has a small range, okay? To be local, it should be within. Now, the local area network can be large in the sense that like, it could cover several buildings, right? Like the university would be an example of several buildings networked together. Is that a metropolitan area network or a local area network? Some would still call it local, okay? There's no set size where it gets this big, it becomes this, or it becomes that. Basically, again, you just want to think that there are different sizes of networks in place. The local area networks connect together to form the metropolitan area network. The metropolitan area networks connect together to create the wide area network. And all the wide area networks connect together to form the internet, okay? Um, 
So the different lands connect to form a man. Okay, the mans connect to form a WAN, and the WANs connect to form the internet. Now, that's a very general term. The internet, it doesn't necessarily mean they're on the internet either, okay? There are other things like these high-speed backbone service lines that will connect one wide area network to another through a really fast connection. Those don't necessarily exist in all the places, but that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. Okay, the virtual LAN is a network of components that behave as if they're connected through the same wire even though they may be physically located at different segments of a LAN. So the idea of the word virtual essentially means it is using software to simulate that environment, okay? So VLANs are configured through software, not necessarily hardware. So this is often, you think of this in the gaming world, right? In the gaming world, they will virtually connect together as if those two computers are directly wired one to the other. They are using internet-based travel to, to travel their data back and forth, but the software is pretending like they're sitting there connected right together, okay? So the, there are advantages to VLANs, right? You don't actually have to buy the physical wiring to actually connect them together. And you can VLAN together over large distances rather than run some big long wire from one computer to the other, okay? The disadvantage of VLANs is performance. Computers will work faster if you physically wire them together. They will have a speed advantage over a virtual LAN, which is using like software to simulate that same environment, okay? Okay, then on LANs, we also have something called storage area networks or SAN networks, which is a dedicated network specifically for data storage, okay? So this would be if you were setting up your own company you might have a bunch of computers networked together, but then produce a device that shares media with all those other devices, okay? This is even done now at the home level, okay? A lot of uh, people will have like um, dedicated servers to work off their televisions and their various computers and store media like movies and sound files and picture files, okay? So this is becoming more and more of a popular system for uh, even small networks. Then you move out to larger networks, like here at the school. We have a server, a file server, where all you guys can store all your files. It's dedicated for storage, okay? So a SAN typically has its own network of storage device that's, um, that the devices can access through their interface, okay? There's a picture here that kind of shows it. Other things that you'll find in dedicated servers are servers dedicated to mail. Now again, this would be if you were in a company and you had a lot of email flowing back and forth through your company. They could put one server just on that. Other companies that have a, a lot of dedication to security might have a login server. So they have one server that's dedicated just for logins. So it doesn't slow down the network. So when a, when a request comes to the network, like someone's trying to log in, it says, oh, here, you take care of that. You're the server that takes care of logins. Oh, somebody's sending an email. Oh. You take care of that. You're the server dedicated to emails. Oh, and some guy's trying to open up his big file. You take care of that. You're the file server, okay? In some cases, all of that's done by one server, right? But then what happens is, if your network gets too big, that server is trying to handle too many things at once. It's got too many jobs. So, again, you can set up your, your network in various ways to gain the biggest or less of an advantage. And these are the kind of questions you can expect on the IB exam. What's the advantage to having dedicated servers? Performance. What's the disadvantage? Can any of you think of a disadvantage to having three servers? Cost, yeah. You have to buy them. Right? If you're a small little company trying to run your own network, you may not want to go out and spend the money to buy three servers. You want to buy one server and maybe just put it together that way. Okay. Then we have wireless local network networks, so WLANs. And again, this is just kind of a specific term. That's you have a local area network that uses wireless networking. Okay, um, this is often very typical in a home network. In a home network, you'll have like one central modem, and then your devices will be connected. That's what my home is like right now, right? I don't wire my computers anymore to my network. I did it one time, uh, but now I don't. Right? Everything is wireless. All the laptops in my house are wireless. All the tablets in my house. All the phones, they, even the televisions, the smart TVs, all connect to the 
network uh, access point through a wireless connection. Okay, that's very common in the home environment now. Not so common here in here, right? We, we still use a wired and wireless connection for various reasons. Okay, then we have the virtual private network, okay? Extends a private network across a public network, okay? So this enables computers to like send and receive data across shared public networks like the internet, okay? As if they were directly connected to that internet, okay? Uh, or to that network. So this is done by creating specific access points to the network and uh, then it uses security or some system there. So we don't need to know all the specific details of what's going on in these. You can see here in the IB content, it's just a general overview of some of this terminology. Okay, but here's some of the specifics of network uh, terms that we need to know. Okay, so the term host, just like if you were having a party, a host on a network is the computer that is running the network. They're the host, okay? This is generally done by a computer that's usually called the server, right? So the server is the host computer. It is hosting things. Now a server isn't necessarily the host, okay? And a host isn't necessarily a computer. Again, a good example of this would be your home network if yours is like mine. I have my little MTS box with a wireless router there. It would be the host, okay? It's not a computer and it's not a server. But it doesn't serve something. But once you move up to a server, you get more functions, right? You get more functionality there, like, like logins and stuff like that, okay? The term node is any device connected to the host. So a node might be a computer. It might be a tablet. It might be a printer, right? It could be a network storage device. It could be all kinds of things that are on the network are essentially nodes. So I think we talked a little bit about this already. The advantages of networks include the sharing of devices, like printers and storage devices, okay? The advantages is cost, right? Buying one printer rather than 30 printers is a huge cost saving, okay? The sharing of data, right? You can connect together, so that means you can share your data together. So that's an advantage. Um, security is something that you can build into a network, so that's an advantage. Okay, so there's tons of advantages and that's a very typical IB type question is list the advantages of a network, list the disadvantages of a network. Very common type of question that they'll throw at you, okay? Um, access to databases, right? So you can store stuff in a central database. This again, if you're thinking in a work environment, that's a little bit better to do it that way, okay? So there are tons of advantages to working with networks. Okay, I think we'll have to stop there for today and we'll pick up on this tomorrow at this point, what type of local network we're going to be looking at.